Yes, yeah, right. Saving it out to the disk potentially. Um, if you think of a disk as a nice linear sequence of disk fixed blocks, then hey, you just got to go to the beginning of the file, you read those continuous blocks, and you're done. But you also have to realize, well, where are the free ones? Where are the ones that have been used? Which ones go to which file? All right, great. We realize that you know, hey, maybe we want to go ahead and, and have certain extensions uh, connected to certain files or certain um, file types or applications. Now, so how are we gonna do this? Well, we can just say, all right, everything's in order. But if you just put everything in order and then start deleting things, what happens? <clears throat> You've got fragmentation, right? So it's like, oh, well, maybe we'll do some other something. Uh, and again, in order to do all this, you often have to have metadata. That metadata may be the, the type of the file, the size of the file, when it was created, who owns it, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so if you do it sequentially, then hey, it's really easy to start at the beginning and read it, but it's not very good for fragmentation. It'd be a lot better if we can break it up into little bits, bits and pieces. We have a part of the file here, and part of the file here, and part of the file down there. So now we can randomly access that. Of course, part of the problem with that is um, physically we've got a head that's reading things from the file, right? And that file, if it's split all over the place, means we have to go from this track to that track. So we have to have that, that head seek to the right track. And then we also have to wait for the piece of information we want to spin around underneath that head. So that's the latency time. So your seek time plus your latency time is going to greatly increase things. So if we could make it so that we're perfectly 100% um, efficient on the use of space by, you know, I'm going to shove, if I've got a nice long file, I'm going to shove part of it here and part of it here and part of it here and part of it here. I fill every single blank space. So I have zero fragmentation. But when I try to read that file, I go to the first record and it's, it's over here. So I'm going to go over to this seat to that track, wait for it to go around. I read that one byte and then, oh, now I need the second byte. Well, then I have to seat down to this track and wait for it to come around. And I seat up to this track and wait for it to come around. So guess what? You're going to be spending 90% of your time seeking and latency and only 10% of your time actually reading, right? Whereas if you had everything on nice big blocks and you seek once, latency time once, and just read, 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 read. Okay. So long linear files are nice for uh, throughput, but having things spread around is uh, nice for fragmentation. So we're going to have find some sort of um, basically balance between those. Obviously, some of the file operations we have to care about are create, and delete, and open and close, which is y'all started doing on your first uh, assignment. We have reads and writes and appends and seeks. Obviously, get attributes, set attributes, maybe renames. So. The other thing is we don't just have a flat file structure. If everything is not in root, okay, you can go ahead and say, hey, I've got some files in root, but then I have subdirectories and sub subdirectories. And so you might have some sort of hierarchical root structure or a file structure such that beginning at the root, you can go down to here and find files or directories. And under those directories, you can have sub subdirectories and finally get down to the files. In order to do that, you have to have a file system and a data structure that can handle that. Um, one way on the Unix, they go ahead and they have a set file structure that, hey, you've got a bin and an ETC and a lib and a temp, okay? And each one of those can then have things that are that. So we talked about that. When you have a disk, you've got the number of platters and sectors and tracks and all that. Um, you can actually format that thing in different ways. I mean, how many sectors do I have? Um, and some of it may be dependent upon the hardware, and some of it may be you have choices. You know, do I want to partition this as one big, huge terabyte C drive, or do I want to go ahead and say, no, I'm going to partition this as a, you know, a little bit, maybe 50 gig for my operating system, and then that's my C drive, and then maybe I have a half a terabyte in my D drive, and almost a half a terabyte as my uh, e-drive. Okay. 
you get to decide that. But in order to do that, the file system has to be able to do that. So oftentimes what they have is they have the MBR, the master boot record. So that's where, hey, when you spin up, how was this disk set up? Okay. How many tracks and how many sectors and, and where's the operating system loaded and blah, 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 blah. And then, um, and how is it partitioned? Okay, so you might say, hey, I've got four or five partitions on this thing. So my C partition, my D partition, my E partition. And so on each one of those, then you can have your, um, you know, your information for that and then potentially your directories and subdirectories and subdirectories. So, um, and we're actually going to get to inodes in just a minute, so we'll, we'll worry about that. And then, of course, you also have to worry about not only where is everything, here's this file and here's this file, and this file is actually broken up into this block and this block and that block, but also where are things not? Where's my free list? So when I want to create a file, I can go to the free list and say, hey, I'm going to pull off these, these places so I can put the file in. So that's sort of the idea there. All right, see, so on a generic MBR, Here's an example of how they have things set up. All right, so obviously we've talked about contiguous allocation. That's cool, it's easy, but um, as soon as you start pulling things out, you've got fragmentation. You can always defrag it, um, but that takes a long time. So if you have a file allocation table, okay, and that's just a table saying this file is here, you know, it starts, we've got file A, it starts at block two, and it's three blocks long. So you can see over here at two, you know, we've got two, three, and four, since it was three blocks long. So two, three, and four are file A. And then file B started at nine, so it's the gray one. So it starts at nine, and it's a length of five, so it's nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. And then file C is at 18 all the way to here. So you can basically just have a table that says, well, where is everything, right? And if they're all, uh, contiguous, you know, every block in a file is next to each other, then all you have to do is have start block and length. You immediately know where being in, right? Uh, now, one thing, how big does the file allocation table potentially have to be for something like this? What is the maximum size of file allocation table? So if uh, file is a right. So in this case, um, since there's 30, zero, I would have to have 35 slots in my file file allocation table, right? Now this is a fairly small. Of course, it also depends on how big is each block. So let's say if each block was 1k then this disk can only have 35K, which is so unreasonable, right? What you're really gonna do is you're gonna have maybe a terabyte disk. And so now if you've got one block, or uh, 1K blocks, how many things do you have to have in this file allocation table? A huge number, right? Um, so maybe there's a better way than having one slot in the file allocation table for everything. Um, and again, the other problem is you can have fragmentation, so you have to compact it. So you said, hey, I'm going to move file A down to 0, 1, 2. I'm going to do file B, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. You compacted everything, that's great. Now you have a big open area. So now you can have more continuous things, but it took a lot of energy to do that. So another way would say, hey, let's not make it continuous. Let's say that we can have our, you know, four block or five block file. So A is now five blocks? Three blocks. Anyways, so we have file A that's now five blocks long. And we can say, oh, it starts at block uh, four. I mean, so we have our logical block, zero, one, two, three, four. But a physical, actual block, is it stored at four and seven and two and 10? Okay, so we, we spread it out all over the place. But now we have to have this linked list, right? So, one way to do that is actually have a list, or we have just a physical, a list of physical blocks, right? And in that list of physical blocks, we can say, okay, if file A starts at block four, okay, and again, 
up here. Notice we've got a 4, 7, 2, 10, 12. So if we start at 4, then 7 is the next bit. We go down to 7, it goes to 2, 2 goes to 10, 10 goes to 12, and 12 has a negative 1 saying, hey, it finishes here. So by having this physical block, this fact table here, then all it has in it is the number of the next block, physical block. Then you can go ahead and find out, oh, okay, so I need to, I need to uh, read 4, 7, 2, 10, 12 in order to pull this whole thing. Now, all right, let me pull up something else real quick. Okay, so if we were looking at file two, okay, and it starts at seven, what blocks, if you were gonna read the whole file, would you have to read, and in what order? So if we're looking at file two and it starts at seven, well obviously the first one we need to read is seven, right? But if we look over here at seven, it says, well, the next one I'm gonna read is eight. So we're gonna read eight. And if we look at eight, it says the next one we're gonna read is nine. If we read nine, then, oh, this is the end of the file, right? So all we had to do is read seven, eight, and nine, okay? Now, one of the questions is, um, so that's the blocks we needed to read. So if we have the starting cluster and we have this end of file marker, do we need size and bytes? That's true. But if this just says EOF, remember this is a table, it just has numbers in it. You know, negative one is the free, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that's the 12 is what the next block is, EOF just says it ends somewhere in block six. Now block six is gonna end up being maybe a 4K block. How much of that 4K block is data and how much of it is junk? So what you have to do is you have to say, okay, so in sector seven, we read this, so we read 2K. We went to eight, we read 2K, now we're to 4K. Then we went down here, um, and when we read nine, well, that would get us up to 6K, okay? And 6K is what, 6144? Of that 6144 possible, we only needed 6044, right? So in other words, the last 100 bytes of that is junk. We only needed to read from um, 4044 to 6044. Does that make sense? Okay. So in other words, yes? The question is, so are we just assuming the blocks are 2,000 bytes? So yeah, yeah. It, it would have to say that in here. I think it's actually, as part of the previous thing, it would say, hey, they're, they're 2K blocks. Okay. Yeah. So it's part of the question. Um, so you might have something here is, hey, um, you've got, which clusters exist, um, do you actually have to have that starting size and why? So that's the kind of question that you'll find on the next exam. Uh, another one might be, okay, so we have a disk, and let's say we're, we're doing this in chunks, right? Because we did it a bite at a time in our seat time and our latency time is going to you know, completely kill our throughput. So we're going to do it in, in 2K chunks. So we allocate everything in 2K chunks. If that's not the one I'm looking for. Ah, here we go. If we had a whole bunch of files on our system that were 1K files, what's the maximum efficiency or how much space is going to be wasted on this disk? Half of it. 
So let's say we have a chunk here, and this is a 2K chunk here, and there's a 2K chunk here, and there's a 2K chunk here. So we put file, out, uh, file A out here, and file A is only 1K. So we put this first block, but half of it's junk, right? And then we put another 1K block. So we put it out here, and then half of it's junk. So you can see if you have a lot of small files, okay. If you have a bunch of large files, okay, then it'd be really great to have 10K chunks or 100K chunks, right? You'd be more efficient because you wouldn't waste, waste much on internal fragmentation. But if you have a bunch of small files and you put a 1K chunk, a 1K file into a 100K block, then you just wasted 99K, right? So you sort of have to choose your block size so that you minimize wastage, right? Now, if I had a seven, or a, let's say a, a 3K block, what am I gonna, or a 3K file, how am I gonna do that? Well, I put two of the K here in the first block and one K into the second block. So in this case, if I have 3K files, then I'm probably gonna have 75% used and 25% wasted, right? So it's going to matter on the long files, it's only that last block that's going to get partially wasted. So it's going to be a fraction of the last block uh, that's wasted. So a lot of times what they'll do is they'll have fairly small block sizes so that even if you have a lot of files, you're only wasting that last little bit of the last block. Well, if you have smaller block sizes, you're going to have more blocks, therefore a larger case. So it, it's sort of a balancing act. Assuming you're going to have a table. And in just a second, we're going to see a way to get rid of the table. All right. So here, 50%. And then on this one, we have a target. So let's go back to here. Here. Okay, so we could have a linked list. So we go here, we follow down to here, here, we follow down to here, here. It's in the file somewhere in this block. So we've got to go back to our file size, take off how many blocks we've traversed, and then minus that, that will tell us how much of this block we've got to leave. Well, that requires this big, long structure, right? Well, is there anything that we can do to make that better? Well, what if we have a binary tree or maybe a, a B tree or something like that where we've got four or five or six things and now we can have a nice, we start here and maybe we have a five nodes here. Each one of these can have five nodes. And then now we've got a nice little structure that, hey, here we can get to this file that we need, how this, this block here or that block here, in a fairly short traversal, and potentially we can allocate these as we need them, right? So now we don't have to have this big, huge structure, we only allocate what we need. This was sort of the idea of inodes. Now, initially, and let's talk about inodes a little bit more, and then we'll go into this again. Okay, so the idea is we're going to have um, this inode. And this inode is going to say, hey, I'm going to inode 18. So I look at inode 18, and it's got a few things in it. And those things can point to data blocks. So the inode or index node is going to point to a data block. And that data block then has the data in it. So for example, earlier when we needed, um, you know, we, we had file A into five different blocks, then what we do is we'd have one inode here, and this is file, you know, file A. It would say, hey, there's block 2, 10, 7, 12, and 9. Okay? And those blocks actually have the data, and this one inode is going to point to every one of those things, right? Well, the problem is we don't want to have to have, I mean, maybe we need two blocks for this file. Maybe we need 100 blocks for this file. 
Do you want to have every inode with 100 things? They said, no. There's a lot of little files, but there are some big files. And so what they ended up doing is they said, OK, what we're going to do is we're going to say, in this inode, obviously, we've got some metadata up here. And that's going to be the, the name of the file, the size of the file, blah, 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 blah. And then of the 15 pointers here, the first 10 of them are going to actually point to data. So here's a block, here's a block, here's a block, here's a block. So if I have a file that's 10 blocks or less, then I can just use these direct nodes. And it's going to point me directly to this, this one, this one, this one, and maybe this one's negative one saying, hey, there's no more data here. But if I ever have more than 10, then this one down here actually points to another inode, OK? And so then now it can point to 10 more, right? We got our 10 data points here. So if that's our setup, the first 10 pointers give us 10 blocks. Okay. Now let's say that each block is 2K. Uh, we'll make it easy for that. 1K. So what file size can we get directly? If the first 10 pointers each point to 1K block. 10 pointers to 1K blocks. We can do 10K, right? But if you had 15 pointers max, the max we'd ever do is a 15K file, and that's not good. If instead this one points to a node here, then this node here can also do 10K, right? So we've got 10K directly. We've got 10K indirectly, one level indirection. So on one, is it one through 10 or one through 12? Let's say one through 10. So one through 10, you go directly there. On 11, 12, 13, you have an indirect node. So 11 can get you another 10, 12 can get you another 10, 13 can get you another 10, right? So by having a one level inode in direction, now you can do 10, 20, 30, 40K worth of files, right? Well, that still means that we can only do 50, 60, 60K files. And that's not enough. So what they actually say is these last two, you have double in direction. So you go down here to an inode, and each one of these goes to an inode. And those actually go to files. So I'm going to get 10K here for each one of the ones here, and there's 10 here. So that gives me 100. So now I've got 10 initially, 20, 30, 40, one level in direction, and then 100, 200, 300 for my second level in direction, right? So now we can have 340K files. Does that make sense so far? So obviously, what's the next option? A triple indirection. Then maybe let's, let's the last one is a triple indirection. Or maybe some sort of link where it's the wrong way up. Um, this is what's called, and these are our inodes, index nodes. Um, often an inode style file system, which is what the index has. So, Instead of having one fat table with 500 entries, each pointing to one thing, now we end up having one, two, three, four, maybe six inodes, and you're done. You don't have to have that whole huge long table. You just have six inodes. Now, this is where you go back to the history of it. When Craig and Ritchie originally started C and Unix and all that, they actually had one table of all the possible inodes. And so, you know, this inode would just point down to this other index, because it's just index to an array, okay? An array of 15 pointers plus metadata. <clears throat> and so this one big long array, and they just pointed to everything, and that's how they got all their directories and subdirectories. And by the way, this can actually point to data, or this could actually be a uh, subdirectory. 
So your data is a subdirectory. It's like, oh, I have got this directory, this directory, and this directory. And then that can point to another I node, and those can blah, blah, blah. So your, your data nodes can either be actual data or they can be directories. So now you've got a single structure that holds all your paths, and then within those paths, or directories or subdirectories, you actually have data. So it's, it basically goes from I node to data or directory to I node to data, et cetera. I actually have two YouTube videos that explain all of this, and I'll be sending those out tonight. Uh, they're like five or six minutes a piece, and hopefully that will help uh, some of this in. Okay, so we can go with this again and go back to this. So if you don't even need that, pump this up. So if you had a disk with two K blocks, okay, and a pointer value with three uh, bytes and seven uh, direct accesses and one indirect. So we're only doing one level of indirection. What is the largest size you can have for a body? Okay. So let's look back up here. We're assuming each one of these is 2K now. So we've got a 2K block. And we have seven directs and one indirect, all right? So for the first seven, how much, how big a file can we have? Say again? 14. 14. So we've got two for this one, two for this one, two for this one. All seven of these total are going to be 14 k bytes. And for this last one down here, we're going to go to an indirect, right? And that indirect one potentially has seven, and each of those seven are two apiece. So what do we have here? Say again? Or no, just for this block right here, we've got seven times two, 14. Okay, so we had 14 direct, and we only had one level of indirection one time, so we had another 14 here, so the biggest size in this case would be 28. Does that make sense? Questions on this one? Maybe just make more of those pointer address, one pointer address. The last one down here? I have just 30 bytes for the block pointer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, like I said, this is sort of a key version of it. I mean, so. You know, oftentimes you say, oh, well, that one, we could go to the third level or the fourth level, or there's a you know, random, you got a linked list, so we're really, really compiled. It depends on how you want to implement it. Okay? That's an implementation of it, that decision. And there's lots of different ways they've been implemented. In the video, they'll actually talk about a uh, Z file system where it does more of something like that. The original, Carnegie Richie one, they just have one, left, uh, one uh, large index array. And so when they allocated that disk, then boom, it allocated everything you needed. So like the fact table. And you could never have more than that many places, um, which is really, really bad if you've got a lot of small files. So one of the things he talks about in the first video is you can actually have you know, 20 gig left on your disk but if there were no inodes left, then it would come up and say, hey, I'm out of memory. And you go, you look at your disk, it's like, hey, wait, I've got 20 gig left. I'm only trying to save a 10 gig file. It wasn't actually the disk space that ran out. It was the inode, because you ran out of things on the inode table. <clears throat> so in the second version of that, I think they came up with the FFS, the fast file system, and it had something more along the lines of this that allows you to um, get rid of that single allocation, you can go a little faster. Um, this is also, I think, in chapter 41, about page 512-ish. So feel free to read on that. 
so again, these are the kinds of questions that you'll see on the exam. Yes? If it was a double indirect block, like so just, if instead of just having a single mm -hmm. indirect block, if it was a double one, yep. would it be uh, 14 times 2 then? Uh, well, it depends here. You can done. So if you had one and it has another one out here, so basically each one of these then had 14, so you'd have 14 times 7, uh, so you'd have end up 8 times 14 total. So we've got our inodes. Um, and again, like I said, those inodes can point to actual data files or they can point to directory structures. In this case, um, we've got who, I mean, here's the root, and the first one is actually pointing to the subdirectory uh, under root. So we've got who and var and bas as our three directories. And so if you want to find out what's in directory, you go to index 18, index 18 says, oh, okay, um, here is for the file foo. Um, it's got a, in this case, only a single file or a single data block at zero. You go here and it says, ah, this is the, the file we're actually going to. So. All right, so that assumes that we've got this data structure that when we go to the file, it's got the game, the name of the file, and all its attributes. Attributes like, what was its creation date? What was its modification date? Who wrote it? What permissions, and who's the owner? What permissions do they have? How many people have links to it? You know, are you sharing this file? If you create the file and you shared it with him, can he delete the file? Okay. If you gave him permission to delete the file and he deletes the file, and you go look at it, that's a bad thing, right? So when you delete a file and there's more than one person looking at it, you don't actually delete the file. You just delete your link to the file. That leaves the actual file for him. It's only when you get down to only one copy of the file and you do delete that you actually delete the file. Make sense? So you have to have all these attributes on the games or mail or whatever the file is. Well, one thing you can do is you can start splitting that off and say, hey, actually the data structures can be stored separately. And that's sort of what they did over here. So they have the name of the file, and then the only thing they had here is the index of that file, that inode. Um, all the rest of the information is going to be out there on the inode. And that's nice because up here, um, you don't want to have all that information stored here because, well, what length do you want your file names to be? Well, you have a lot of short file names, but maybe you have, every now and then, you've got to have, well, I'm going to allow a file name of up to 255 characters. Well, if any one of them gets 255, then all of them now have to be allocated for 255. So that's sort of a bad thing. Instead, you split it off, then you can say, ah, now it's over here in this record, and that record can be allocated just to the size it needs to be. We're only going to allocate 20 characters for 20 character file name and then 256 for 256. Just data structures. You know, you've got a problem, how do you want to solve it? There's an easy way to solve it that's probably not efficient, or you can have a more complex way of solving it that's probably a lot more efficient. That takes more time. All right. So again, you could have it so that, hey, when we have our file, it's going to have all its attributes, like the name, and then just this indicator, okay, this is the end of it. And then we've got another fixed length entry, and it goes down there. Um, you could have variable length entries, or you can do something like this, where you've got your file one, the name of it, and its attributes, name two attributes, all the fixed, the fixed length attributes. And then doing variable length attributes, you just point down here to the And so the name starts here, ends here, and starts here, ends here, starts here, ends here. So that way, you can have this, since it's all fixed length, 
be allocated once you're done. The variable stuff is over there in the middle. All right, so we talked about directory structure. We talked about owners. So if you've got multiple owners, then when you delete, you don't really delete the file. Oh, sure. Excuse me. You uh, just delete the link, the soft link to that file. until now, we just been saying, hey, we're going to store it, we're going to read it. Well, what's one of the things you do fairly often? If you've got a directory structure, huh? Well, you create files, but sometimes you want to like access a file, right? And you ever remember where every file is? Probably not. I know I don't. So you have to search for a file, right? So I know somewhere on this disk, one terabyte disk, is there's this little mini file called Examples for class today. And so we have to be able to search for that file, right? Well, if we just had that one list, and you could say, okay, I'm going to start from the top and go all the way to the bottom, and whatever I find it, I find it. If I don't find it, then I have to look at every single thing in that list, right? Um, but what if we had this structure where it's not just a link, uh, an array, it's this weird linked list of inodes and sub inodes. How do I search for a file? Well, y'all probably have an algorithms class to, if I want to search a large group of things, what's an easy way to do that? A binary search tree, BST, right? Mm -hmm. And so if I've got a tree set up there, and it says, hey, all my A files are over here and all my Z files are over there, then I don't have to look through the whole, the whole directory. I can just go over here to my you know, Z files or my A files. Or maybe I, you know, have it split such that my tree is. Oops, didn't have it. Right. Yeah, no. In any case, um, I've got a nice tree like we saw earlier that says, okay, I can say five levels, and all my A through E's are here, and my F through I's are here. Da da da. And so now I can go down to this level and I say, oh, all my A's are here, my B's are here, my C's are here. Um, so by having a search tree like that, we can go ahead and um, make things better. Now, obviously, a binary search tree is going to be you know, left or right. There's only going to be two uh, children coming out of every parent. But if you get lots and lots and lots of files, that means it's going to be a very high depth tree, right? So if instead we have maybe five or six things going out, then we can reduce the size of that tree so we can reduce the number of searches we have to do, right? Um, so in any case, we're going to end up doing not just a uh, two-pointer speech, but we're going to have a slightly larger number. So if we have a um, tree with a degree D, then we're going to have you know, potentially uh, B children coming out of each node, and then each one of those. Um, now we have a single decision. We go left or we go right. We go, oh, do you go to the first child, the second child, or the eighth child? So what you have to do is you have to have uh, basically two D minus one keys. And if you're between A and C, then you go down here. If you're between B and you know, G, you go down this way. So those keys are stored at each level. So you have a little bit more information you have to store each node, but now you can very quickly say, oh, I go to this to the third node, to the fifth node, to the first node, to the second node, boom, I'm there. Even though there were a thousand things. <clears throat> Is everybody familiar with um, like KD trees or uh, basically binary or 
more than binary trees? Is there anybody who would want a refresher on that? Okay, cool. Uh, if anybody does, just send me an email. I'll send you all some links because there will probably be at least one question. In fact, yeah. that's really neat. Something like this. So if we had this tree right here, um, there's. Okay. So we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six possible things out. We're going to have five keys at each. And so if we were to put the value of 98, we go down here and say it's between 23 and 39, nope. 39 to 59, nope. 51 to 61, nope. 61 to 71, nope. So it's above 71, so it would go out to here. So at this level, is it between 73 and 5? No, there, no, no. 98 is actually up here, so it's not here, so we have to create one and go down here. So hopefully y'all are good on that. If not, send me an email and I will. All right, well, given the fact y'all haven't done any studying probably in a week, that's probably enough. Let's go ahead and end class today. If you have questions on your homework, all right, me, send me an email or whatever. Um, and please turn it in. Go ahead and